logged in. And so we start off with the opening prayer. All right. Let us put ourselves in the holy presence of the Lord. Dear God, we thank you for this day that you have given us to come together, to be connected and to work towards the promotion of knowledge and truth within our community. May you grant us clarity of mind, open hearts, and willful, willful spirits to manifest your will in our decisions and in our actions. May we fully embrace our tasks as we face challenging times. Please bless us. Bless us all in this activity. This we ask in the name of Christ. Amen. Now we pay attention to the Philippine National Anthem. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Ayang magiging Heros ng sinahanan Alam ng puso Sa dikit mo'y buhay Upang hinirang Tuyan ka ng magiging Sa manlulupin Di ka pasisigil Sa nagatang tutok Sa simoy at sa langit Mga pangraw ay hinagang Kawin sa pagkaya minamahal Ang isang kapatawa at mo'y matumpay na nagtinitin Ang itungin at araw niya kay nagpang ay di matitinit Lumang ang araw na warag at pagsinta Mo'y langit sa pilit mo Salamat po. At ngayon naman po ay tinatawagan po natin ang ating dekano, si Dean Raden Piedoso, para po sa opening remarks. Welcome po, Dean. Yeah, thank you, uh, Rhea. Yeah, magandang umaga sa ating lahat at magandang umaga sa ating mga, uh, o oh, magandang hapon sa ating tagapagsalita na nasa California. So, again, sa all our colleagues, not only in the College of Human Ecology, sa mga ibang units pa ng university, maybe uh, from outside UP. Uh, so, magandang umaga muli at nagpapasalamat tayo sa ating batang-batang uh, tagapagsalita sa umagang ito who will talk about teaching with technology in a flexible learning mode. And uh, thank you for the initiative of uh, uh, Doc Greg Pawilen and uh, Jenny. Amparo, the Associate Dean, in uh, really spearheading this kind of uh, webinar uh, series for our preparation in this coming, special this coming semester. Nagpapasalamat tayo at uh, lahat ng ating uh, inaanyayahan tagapagsalita ay nagpapaunlak, katulad ni John. So, John, uh, maraming salamat sa iyong pagpapaunlak and I know, I'm sure, na maraming matututunan yung ating mga uh, participants sa webinar na to in the kind of uh, learning mode na dapat ay matutunan through the use of uh, technology. So uh, without further ado, again, thank you very much, John, and uh, good morning to all the participants. Mag uh, God bless us all. All right. Thank you very much, Dean Piedoso. At ngayon naman po ay tinatawagan po natin ang chair ng CHE Curriculum Committee at ang uh, uh, nag-initiate po nitong event na ito, si Dr. Greg Pawilen para po ipakilala ang ating tagapagsalita. Dr. Greg? Oh, maganda umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, thank you, Dean. Uh, maganda umaga pala sa ating dekano and uh, to all faculty members. So it's an honor for me to introduce to you our speaker this morning. So uh, let me start it this way. It was April 17, 2011, a hot Sunday afternoon, when the College of Education asked me to join the UP Diliman graduation ceremony. I don't want to attend because this speaker at that time is no other than the President Pinoy. Right. 
But we were told that the, that the valedictory address will be given by no other than Dodd Chan Gabriel Pelias. So for this reason, I attended. So Chan Gabriel Prodente Pelias is a BS mathematics graduate of the University of the Philippines, Diliman. He graduated as summa cum laude with a general weighted average of 1.016 breaking a mark set in 1948 as a graduate with the highest GWA in UP's history. He became a legend in UP Diliman and the UP system and the whole mathematics world in the Philippines, a genius and on campus. He's not only good in math, in math, like other gifted, he's an outstanding pianist too. And hoops, magaling sa video okay. Immediately after his graduation, he was invited to teach at the Institute of Mathematics at the College of Science. He was a favorite teacher of many students, especially the freshmen and those from other colleges who are afraid of the intellectual monsters from the Institute. While teaching, he immediately took, took his Master of Science in Mathematics at the, at the same college and graduated with a GWA of 1.0. Currently, He's taking his PhD in mathematics at the University of California, Santa Cruz. He's also a teaching fellow in the same university. I could vividly remember his famous line during his graduation speech when he said, and I quote, you graduated not from, the, from any university, but, um, but from a university named after the nation. Use your talents to contribute to the country. In, in an, a rare interview done by St Stephanie Cabigao, of, for the UP alumni, he made the promise, and I quote, okay, I want to live the last days of my life. Jan, I'm reading your, word, your words. I want to live the, the last days of my life as a professor here in UP, where I can do what I, what I can do, what I want to do. I'd like to uh, read it again. I want to live the last days of my life as a professor here in UP, where I can do what I, I want to do. Gab Gab, we remember this. My dear colleagues, let's welcome Dajan Gabriel P. Pelias of the University of the Philippines. Welcome to UPLB, Jan. Hi, thank you, Sir Greg, um, for that, I say, interesting introduction. Meron ka talagang... Well, yeah, uh, I remember when I, when I answered that question from that interview, I mean... Uh, what was running in my mind was, well, the question was, what do I want to do in the end? And yeah, I would like to do mathematics, um, like be left doing mathematics and not, you know. Well, anyway, uh, yeah. So in terms of service, yeah. So when, 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 when Dr. Greg um, asked me to do this, um, I immediately said yes, because I know that this is a time of a pandemic and everyone is, you know, on their, on, their, on their knees, I guess, and trying to get things together. And, you know, the academic year is starting and um, everyone wants to prepare as much as they can, as the best they can. Um, and I said that, well, sure, uh, here in Santa Cruz, we're already doing this because even back in... So this yung system Marito is... Uh, quarterly so you, yeah so you have you know um, 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 fall winter spring and summer and yeah and right now it's summer I'm actually I just finished my my the, the class I was teaching well remotely um, a few hours ago um, so yeah so when, when when Dr. Greg asked this like sure like if, if, if all you're asking is to for me to share what I'm doing so that everyone can learn a thing or two. I'm not, let me just get this out there. I'm not declaring myself to be an expert on this at all. I am speaking as a practitioner. I'm speaking as, some, as an end user of all these gadgets or tools or whatever we would want to call them. Um, so yeah, so I said, yeah, anything to help. So sure, um, yeah. Okay, so that's that. And as I said, I don't have any theoretical slides because I understand that this is more of me sharing how I do things. So I literally, I guess we'll show some portions of videos I recorded of myself while lecturing because um, 
So I don't know how you're going to do this, but let me start by saying that. Let me start by sharing. Yeah, I'm already doing this. I'm already starting my talk. So let me start by sharing uh, how, how UCSC is doing things ever since um, last spring when the lockdown happened here. Um, actually, it started in winter. So, bandang, teka lang, anong winter? Around end of, end of March, beginning of March, around March. Um, I was already towards the end of my complex analysis uh, le uh, lecture class. Um, and uh, yeah, it, let me just say that it sucks to be, an inst to be the actual instructor in this time because you suddenly are, um, you know, parang sinabak bigla sa gera na, uh, you're, you're, no one is prepared. Although, to be honest, the administration has been bombarding us with the emails about preparing for, yeah, um, cases of COVID here are on the rise. So you might want to prepare um, about um, giving your exams online. I will actually, might talk, I, I might talk about that in, the, in a while. But, but anyway, so, so just to complete that story, so it started actually in winter. And... Um, so towards the end of the winter, we had to immediately, immediately switch to remote slash online mode, actually more of remote, because if I'm not mistaken, the difference between remote and online learning is online learning is you have like lecture videos recorded and um, the students are able to watch these videos um, in their own time. And this is... Um, uh, yeah, yeah I, I guess that's what I want to say. So, yeah, so that's what online learning is. So, hindi siya nangyayari ng live, tulad ng nangyayari ngayon. And um, remote learning, on the other hand, I think the difference is that th it's, it's happening live, just like what's happening now. And so, there is an opportunity to ask a question or whatever, ask a question or two, um, um, yeah, to ask a question. And um, so, it's just like a normal, well, I, 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 I sincerely am cringing as I say this because I myself am not a fan of the online mode but it is what it is and it might be the best way to do things right now but it is the so it is a solution I'm not at all in a position to give an opinion if it is the best solution or not um, so yeah so so remote learning is essentially you it's like a usual lecture although to be honest again I'm speaking as a practitioner as I'm speaking as an end user here, uh, as someone who, said, who has already experienced it um, uh, for the past few months, it is weird. <laughs> Just like right now, right now it is weird, I'm speaking to that camera and I don't know how you're reacting right now. Um, but it is what it is again. Uh, okay, so, so that's remote learning. Although the way we do it here is, even if it's remote learning, we're doing, what we call asynchronous versus synchronous. So I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with that terminology, but really all it, all it boils down to is um, synchronous, literally, you know, same time, synchronous. So uh, how do I say this? So for example, it's live and yeah, and, and your, your, your students are attending. So a remote mode would be a synchronous mode. And an asynchronous mode, like not the same time, would be an online mode where, again, you can watch recorded videos in your own time. However, it's kind of like a hybrid in our case because they're essentially, they encouraged us to teach remotely, like teach live, but at the same time record the videos. I'm guessing that's what's happening right now. For example, you're recording this, you're recording this talk. So ever since my, 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 my lectures, I've been recording them while I'm giving them live, while some of, the, some of my students are there uh, participating, like literally, as I said, I'm keeping it as much as, I, I'm keeping the experience as, as similar as when you were uh, pre-COVID. So in other words, I, I ask questions to this empty camera lens and hope that someone out there in the void in outer space hears the radio waves of my voice and someone will respond to it and um, sometimes there well actually last quarter marami namang 
sumasagot naman sila. I mean, like they actually react and sometimes they react on their own. Just like I would encourage you, for example, to, I don't know how the moderators have set this up, but in, in, the, in the spirit of the usual culture here, you can let, I'm encouraging everyone in the audience to just shoot out your, I don't know, um, your questions or whatever, um, or clarification or anything. So yeah, so, so my point is we have been keeping it as much as possible like how you usually conduct a lecture. Of course, there are obvious blatant differences. For example, I can't write. Um, when I was doing my complex analysis class, and I'm starting with this because this might be the crudest example of, of what you can do, I have a blackboard. Well, not here. Pre, uh, that was hindi pa mataas yung COVID cases nune. So we can still go to the building. Some of my grad classes were still uh, did not still um, still did not um, revert to, uh, rather convert to remote or online mode. So we were still going in person to our classes or our grad classes. And so for my complex analysis lectures, I just you know brought my laptop, um, put it on my desk in my office. I wrote my notes on the blackboard, just like how you know uh, how you how you do lecture. And yeah, and okay lang naman. It, it, it worked out. I mean, it was already the few remaining days of, of, of winter quarter for complex analysis. And it was fine. Um, I didn't have this yet. So I highly recommend that the administration kind of supply you with these or sort of support you with. I mean, yes, because now here's the alternative. Um, as I said, you can either use a whiteboard or a blackboard um, in front of the camera. That's the most obvious, um, that's the most primordial um, instinct to do uh, in order to convert to an online mode. Of course, there's technology and I think, <coughs> excuse me, and I think that is the point of this talk. Um, yeah, so starting spring, um, our department here uh, solicited for solicited us um, as to what kinds of equipment we would like to have in order to support this new mode <laughs> of education. So yeah, so last, that was last spring. So that was like, what, what? Okay, so sobrang tagal na nung lockdown dito. Hindi ko na maala. Ano na ngayon? Agosto. So to, right now it's August. So I, I think, you might be very much. Yeah, around April, yeah, April, May, and June, I think. If I'm not mistaken, that's spring. Um, so April, this came um, by my doorstep. And uh, yeah, so this was what I requested, something that I can write on that will automatically, you know, uh, show what I'm writing real time on screen. So yeah, and, and they, they provided it. And so spring, when I was assigned the Euclidean and non-Euclidean geometry course, um, I lectured using this, using, using a stylus and a tablet. So just like the Babylonians used to do. So, but of course this is not an actual stylus and not, this is not a Babylonian clay tablet. Anyway, so yeah, so that's what I've been doing so far. And as I said, even though it's remote, our department encouraged us to record our videos, videos of our lectures while giving it remotely because that is their way to make the, make the access equitable in the sense that if you have problems, if you're a student and, and you have problems in terms of accessibility at home, um, you can, at least there's an option to, you know, watch it in your own time. Of course, that does give you the disadvantage of not being able to ask questions live. Um, but as I said, it is the compromise that, that was made. Okay, uh, so what I'm gonna do right now is, I also under, sorry, sorry, I keep on rambling like this. Um, I, I understand that also you might like to learn about these other actual concrete apps or technologies. So again, I'm gonna put out that disclaimer, I'm not a technical expert, but I do use these. So all I can share here is literally how things go here. 
how I how how I use all these uh, machine uh, tools and whatever. Okay, so yeah, so just to give you a sample, this is weird. I'm gonna play a video of myself. <laughs> so let's see what's how it's gonna go down. Uh, let's see. This is now for the, for for this summer. Um, yeah, so this is an example of a video I do. Um, I, I really don't know. I mean, I'm just sharing everything that I have, and I'm I'm ser I'm sincerely hoping that this is something helpful or useful to anyone here. Uh, by the way, so to those seeing my screen right now, so you're seeing my Google Chrome browser, right? And yeah, so this is where this is what you call Canvas. And I'm understanding that you're getting this app, which is, I guess, a good idea. I'm not saying that this is the best app. I mean, again, I'm not the expert. I really don't know if there are other apps, but definitely this is a way of conducting um, um, education in this era. Even before COVID, we already had this. I mean, many of the interactions here in the university are online. Um, like we pay our hindi ako hindi ko na nararanasan na pumipila sa anong pangalan ng lugar na yun sa shopping center sa uh, cashier's office para magbayad ng nung nung, nung extra ng natitirang tuition para uh, na kailangan bayaran so lahat dito online so so even before the, the pandemic we already had this and so yeah so yeah so as you can see these are the published courses these are the courses that I am either currently teaching or I have taught before, uh, published, meaning that it actually went running. Um, and yeah, halo ito. So it, this, these include both my courses, as, my courses as a student and my courses as the instructor. So for example, I'm the instructor of this. this these are undergrad courses, complex analysis, classical geometry, history of math right now, this summer. This is, well, here, I, I was a teaching assistant for this one, calculus. And this, this is a grad course for the fall, this coming fall 2020 in September. Um, so yeah, we, we've already enrolled, right? Um, registered for courses. And uh, yeah, so as I'm, so the, my point being, um, yeah, so let me click that so that you just have an idea. So, so yeah, so there, there's my professor there, Chong Ying Dong, and that's the name of the course. And, as you can see, this is, this is a platform where you can communicate with your students. Um, e again, even pre-COVID, we've, um, faculty here have been using this. Um, but but the, 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 whole, the whole shebang of this is that, um, especially now, that physical contact might not be the best idea. <laughs> so uh, this might be one of the ways we can, you know, adjust. Again, I'm not in the position to give an opinion whether or not we should do it this way or not, but if you're gonna do it this way, this is one option, this is one alternative. Okay, so how does this work? Um, yeah, so actually let me direct you to where I am the instructor so that I can tell you like, what are the things I find okay and probably not so okay about this. Um, for example, complex analysis, I taught this even before the pandemic. Um, so even before the pandemic, we've, I've been using this in order to, for example, assign homework and stuff. So for example, um, uh, I post my announcements here like that, right? So grades are up, final exam, office hours, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, so March 16, that's the time when we switched online. That's why I'm sharing my Zoom link in this announcement. So... So there you go. Um, okay. So, do you have any specific questions about this? Like, like, does anything come to mind right now? If 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 yes, please feel free to, you know, um, interrupt me. Again, ang hirap. <laughs> so this is what I mean. That it's really weird. <laughs> it's um, I don't know if. This is too slow. I don't know. Could student access? Okay, could students? Oh, that could students access their canvas offline? I don't think so. I think 
you need to be connected to the internet to access this. <sighs> yes, you have to be. And um, although, um, yun nga. So kaya nga, there's this distinction between online and um, remote, no? So, I mean, well, it's remote, but but most of the things are online in the sense that you can do them in your own time. So, for example, I do. Und- I, I think I know where this question is coming from, and let me let me just say this. So, so so you can't access this online. We've had problems like that. I'm not gonna pretend that there were no problems. For example, as I said, we have been using this ever since, right? So, for example, as not as an instructor, as a teaching assistant, I had to respond to certain, you know, um, the, for example, logistic problems of students. Like, uh, I can't access my ganito or I can't, um, I can't open the link and, <laughs> and all those um, seemingly minor issues. But really, they're great because, for example, my prof- the professor who was giving, who was the uh, instructor of record for that class back then, um, he was also giving quizzes and um, what do you call this? Yeah. Um, oh, please show a sample. Yeah, yeah, I will. Let me just finish my thought here about Canva, but, but I will. Yeah, thank you for reminding me. It's in that next tab. Okay, so that's how I was saying. So um, I'm not, well, it's not anymore published here. I'm not sure if I have the power to, re- to, to, to go to that link because I'm not the instructor of record of when, in, in that time. I was the slave. I, I'm, 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 a, I'm, I'm an assistant at that time. So, um, okay, so the point being, um, when you look at these assignments, you can have actually the option to, how do I call this? You have the option to give a time quiz. So, because, yeah, this is what I want to address. Um, usually, when people think of online, um, they think, uh, so, paano yan? Hindi ko na mabibigay yung exam na time yung exam. Pwede na silang mangopia, blah, 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 blah. Uh, okay. I also had that issue. No, I still have that issue, actually. But there, again, there is a way of a compromise. There is like this uh, meeting in the middle kind of thing where you can time it. So, as you can see, for example, in homework one, so I assign it online. How did I do this? Oh, I just assigned, uh, in this case, in, in, in this particular case, I just assigned um, uh, items from a certain homework. Okay, now, um, although that's not the point, that, that's not the example I want to show. What I want to show is where I actually wrote down a question. So let me go to geometry. That's where I actually type questions. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, assignments. Uh huh. Yeah. So, for example, this one. So you can you can right away type your homework here. You can also upload a PDF if you want. Um, that is that is uh, the, the 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 platform permits that. Um, so just to give you an idea. So before this before this got published. So what it looked like was this. Um, so these are the kinds of options that you can see. So this is the body where you can, uh, this is, the, this is the, the box where you can enter the body of your homework, uh, whatever instruction you have. And you have, you have your usual options, just like in Word, for example, in usual typesetting, um, formatting uh, options. And well, for me, I mean, if there is, I, I, I would bet that there are some of you who are doing math. Um, as someone who teaches mathematics, this is important for me. So you can insert math. Of course, if you know LaTeX, you can just LaTeX your, you know, your file and then upload it. But my point is the platform actually allows you to directly type in your homework. I mean, your, your uh, what do you call this? Type in your homework questions. Um, and uh, yeah, you can see even the more bizarre uh, symbols like supremum. 
Uh, no, 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 sorry. No, no, sub and sup. It's just for, for a subscript and a superscript. Fraction, root, etc. cetera. Um, Greek letters, operators. Okay, I'm definitely pandering to the math people, but again, I'm sharing. <laughs> so <laughs> I reserve the right to choose the subject, <laughs> which is mathematics. So yeah, so and point this, it allows you to do this, okay? Uh, yeah, via stress P function, um, Aleph, Aleph um, gradient, Nabla, Planck's constant, or whatever. So they have this, like, for example, just, I don't know, click it. Or again, if you're doing LaTeX, you can actually, you know, for example, if you, you already know, like for all, you can do that. Okay, so I just type a for all X, um, there exists for all, wait, 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 for all epsilon, there exists delta, such that, you know, blah, blah, blah. So you can do this, you can do this, all right. Okay, so you can do that although I'm not saying that this is the best uh, platform. Um, and then I put my points here. Why is that two? Oh, because I, it's only one question in this case. This was the very first homework and it was literally the very first day. So we've only covered not, we've only covered not, we, we covered not that much. So two points and you can group it, assignments. Oh, by the way, I will tell you how I did this. Um, so, and then, yeah, you can display it as points or letter grade. So I'm not sure how you do things. So for example, if you go from an, like with an ABC or, or a one, one, two, five, one, five, like hindi, hindi mo siya talagang kinocompute like 80%, 90%, but parang nominal yung inyong um, categories, yung inyong grades, then that there is a way to do it. Um, what else? Or you can make it not graded. So for example, those, those who are teaching, like, for example, I don't know, if you have like, there, 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 there is this way of giving assessment, right? Which is ungraded. It's just, you know, it's, it's, it's for the own, for, for the student's own self-assessment, but it's not graded. There's that option. Like you can put up a question there and you can just put not graded there to make sure that it's not graded. Um, you can also check this if you don't want to include that in the final grade. And you can also choose the submission. So for example, before pre-COVID, I would usually, you know, click this on paper. But now, of course, no. <laughs> so online, you can, uh, what else? The external tool is literally for, I've never used this, but I think it's for if you're using a different app in order to, like an external app, in order to upload your homework, I think. But in any case, so when you, when you click, click online, um, yeah, so that's what you're gonna have. The options would be either text entry, a URL, media recordings, like if you want them to upload the video, I suppose. Um, but um, that almost is never my concern though, so I can't speak so much about that. But definitely here, text entry or file upload. So most of, I mean, yeah, many of my students use this. They upload a PDF of whatever. So for example, they scan, okay, they scan their homework and then, you know, it becomes a PDF or a JPEG, I don't know, or PNG file, an image or a PDF file, and then they upload it. Um, I'll also show you the student view because there is this option too that allows you to see it, the student view. Um, or text entry, what does text entry mean? that means that you're gonna type in your answer directly in a, in a box like this. So the student will see some box like that and then you know he or she will just directly type um, his or her answers there. Um, again, if you're, kasi usually yung math lang naman yung may issue or math or science kung saan gumagamit ng mga kaibang symbols. Um, so if, if that is the case, then as I said, the student has also this option of you know, putting a, a math symbol there and also putting an image or whatever, like here, or a video, okay? So, yeah. All right, uh, what else? Uh, what else do I want to say before here, before? And yeah, and this is where I put the deadlines. Um, you can also make it a group assignment. So you can see that there are many options here. You can make it a group assignment, although I can't do that anymore because the deadline has already passed. Um, I think the peer reviews is for students reviewing each other. 
I think ito yung literal na exchange papers. <laughs> Baka ito yun. Yeah. But again, I can't speak so much because I've never used this option. Um, this one, I can say something. So you have, you, you, you can control the submission attempts. In other words, so anong ibig sabihin nito? So you have, you, you will put a deadline, right? So assign to everyone. You can in fact choose if you only want to assign it to certain sections. So for example, uh, let's see. For example, this lecture, if I remember correctly, there were two sections. So there was a single lecture and there were two discussion sections, like problem sections, like recitation classes, na yung teaching assistant yung maga handle. So you have A and B, for example, here, discussion. Um, you can actually choose only which, if you only want to assign this homework to that section, that's, that is also possible here. Okay? Um, yeah. Of course, I just usually click everyone. Or you can choose to assign it to only a single person or a few people, like, 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 like for example, this one. And when would you exactly do that? When would you need that? For example, I had certain students before that needed an incomplete. Um, and there were certain situations where you have to assign a particular special homework for people, then this, will cut, this would come in handy, this kind of option where you can choose only particular students to assign certain homeworks to. Um, and here, you also have the option, well, obviously this is for the due date of the requirement. And this one is something that's very useful for me. This um, allows you to control when your homework will be viewable for the students. Uh, yeah, that's it. When your, when your homework, when, when the instructions or the questions can be viewed by the students. So for example, I put here until April 7, the same, the same day and time as the due date. So what that means is beyond this date, um, as you have seen in the, let me see, let me save first. And let me go back here. As you can see here, it says they're closed. Why does it not highlight? But anyway, so you get my point. So as you can see there, it says closed, meaning in student view, uh, well, well if, if, if I'm the student, I can't see this. Like I, I can't click this, okay? So there's that option that allows you to, you know, hindi, hindi nyo kailangan alalahanin na, ay, kailangan ba tanggalin ko na yung tanggalin ko na yung homework na yung kasi tapos na yung deadline. No, you can, you can plan it. You can plan it. In fact, you can also plan when it is released. So that's the point of the available from. So kung naalala nyo, may dalawang box doon, from and until. So until, kung kail, hanggang kailan ng available. From, bakit may from? Sometimes you want to plan ahead, right? So you want to type it in. The, you want to type the questions in. But you're not going to publish it right away. So instead of waiting, instead of, instead of waiting for that day and time, and then parang aabangan mo na, okay, 12 midnight na ba ng ano, ng Sabado, tapos pipindutin mo yung publish, sa halip na gano'n ang gagawin mo, you, you just schedule when it's gonna automatically get published. Is that okay? So, so yeah, you have these options there uh, when you use this, uh, at least in the assignments page. Um, what else? Oh, also, and you can classify what kinds of requirements you have. So in my case, for example, in this class, my only requirements then were a bunch of assignments and a final exam. Uh, this was the time na hindi nagpa midterm kasi, kasi nga biglang pandemic, ewan ko. And yeah, this medyo elective course itong geometry. Not everyone takes uh, a subject as difficult as non-Euclidean geometry, I guess. So, okay. So you can... As you can see here, you can add group and you can, you know, put the name of the group there if you want, for example, I know, quizzes, right? And you can assign here what percent of the total grade it will be. For example, here, um, if I put there, for example, 15, then it will be 15% of the grade. So just an example. So for example, the group assignments, I assign 60% for that. And the final exam, I, I assign 40% for that. So... So you have these uh, options. Okay, and then we do the grading here. Oh, by the way, here's, here's also the thing that I like about this system. Hindi ko nakilangan ng Excel file. Hindi ko nakilangan i-Microsoft Excel ito. Because you can input the data automatically here, 
So for example, here, um, not, only am, not, not only do I have access to this, to this platform, so does my teaching assistant. So for example, if, if, so if we're grading, so I, I upload my, my share of, of, of scores of grades and he uploads his share of grades, right? And you can do that real time. I mean, I, no, no, I mean, you can do that with the same platform. Hindi mo na kailangan na, you know, uh, may Excel file ka, tapos, okay, send ko sa yung Excel file, send mo, send mo balik sa akin yung Excel file. Sorry, let me see the, my, my, my tanong. John, students could only see his grade and not the entire grade book, right? Uh, wait, let me see. I'm actually not sure. Uh, I'm, hmm. That's a good question. I've never experienced checking my grade. In, I mean, in grad class, parang hindi uso naman kasi dito yun. Um, or rather, yeah. My, my, my point being, hindi ko, ma, hindi ko alam actually kung kita niya yung buo. Like, like the entire breakdown, for example. Oh, sorry, sorry, wait a minute. If you mean the grade book like all of them, no. Of course not. <laughs> they can only see their grade, sorry. They can only see their own grade. If that was the question, sorry. I thought, I mean, what I don't know is like, to what extent do they see like these columns? That was what I was thinking. Like, do they, like, do they see these and just, or do they see automatically these or do they even see the total? So, yeah, but definitely, yes, they, of course, they, they won't see. Uh, that would violate confidentiality uh, clauses. And you know, I'm in the United States. And this is the country na pinaka importante yung mga ganyan kung di ma-demanda ka. This is the country where everyone sues everyone else. So, no. Canvas won't do that. <laughs> so, if, hindi nyo po kailangan mag-alala tungkol sa ganun. Okay. Uh, ano pa? Ano pa? Ano pa? Speaking of confidentiality, teka, alisin ko na yan. Huwag yung tignan yung mga grade nila. <laughs> okay. Uh, what else? Um, oh, this is actually important. In a time of pandemic, one of the reasons why I prefer a live class is I can interact with my fellow grad students. And I'm supposing that the undergrads also want to interact with each other in the sense that they can ask each other about problems. Not because gusto nila magkopyan, but they want to learn from each other kung sakaling hindi natin ma-explain ng, ng, mas, ng maayos, baka mas ma-explain ng, isang, ng kapwa nila uh, mag-aaral. So, there is this discussion tab, and well, not a, well. I think there is another platform that they use, like on their own or no group of group sila. But uh, the point is, there is this option where they can discuss here. For example, a certain student asks for a study group, and they post it here, so they, they can post there, or they can ask a question here. Um, that is, if if they're if they want to ask it in public, because everyone will everyone will benefit anyway. From, the, from my response to that question. So let me just uh, give us an example. For example, this one. So in one of the homeworks, someone asks, and instead of emailing me, he posted it publicly. So I can also address it, so, so that I also have the option of conveniently addressing it publicly, which I did. So for example, here, so we have an isosceles triangle, should the exterior angle bisector uh, and not meet it, to which I replied that in projective geometry, you can have a point at infinity, blah, blah, blah. So, and he said, thank you. <laughs> so, so the point is, so parang pwede, you can have like a con conversation thread here. So there. So that's how it goes down uh, with Canvas. Of course, I'm not, I'm, I'm not yet done. I'm, I've just covered announcements, assignments, discussions, grades. Uh, okay. Since lahat kayo ay faculty naman, so this people page allows you to see who's active and not, I guess. So, mahuhuli mo kung yung sudyante ay wow, ngayon mo lang ginagawa yung homework kasi nakalagay dito yung date <laughs> kung kailan niya huling binuksan. So, of course, there is an understanding of confidentiality here. Na, na ang dahilan lang nito ay hindi para po istok niyo sa jante niyo ngunit upang malaman kung kung teka nawawala ba siya sa klase does he is he still there so that kung sakaling nakita niyo na parang o oh, parang ilang ilang weeks na tapos wala, hindi siya active so you will know kung kailangan niyo siyang i-email to notify if hey are you still there <laughs> still alive 
did COVID get you? So, so this is the point of this. Um, also, um, this is where you will know who's, who has access to your course. For example, here, so you, you see the role, right? And of course, for example, me, where, where am I? There, there I am, I'm the teacher, right? And I have a TA. So, so, so this, is, this is the confirmation that not only you, but also your assistant or for example, your discussion teachers, for example, in the case of a large class lecture scenario, um, can, uh, this is where you can confirm that uh, they're there. And if they're not there, you can add them. Like, let's see, I don't know why I can't add them right now, but I used to, maybe because it's already too late, I'm not sure. But, but at the beginning of the course, definitely my option again, ito. you can click this add people and you just put the email address. Now, if, if Canvas, you know, partners with your university, which it does here, um, uh, I think meron silang database of email addresses. Um, like for example, at UCSC, everyone is at UCSC. And pwedeng kumisan ilagay mo na lang yung actual name niya instead of the email address and it's already in the database. And so UP can do something like that as well um, to make things convenient and so on and so forth. The, point, uh, the only point, my only point being, it is something that is being uh, afforded to everyone by this uh, platform. Um, yeah, what else? Files, this is where I, you know, upload my files. <laughs> um, like that. Uh, what, what is this? Geometry, yeah, so for example here, I up, well, Uso naman yan dito, I just upload my lecture slides and, you know, I just let them, let them look at them. I don't know. Oh, 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 uh, let me do, let me flex though this, this capability. So, um, so I upload them here. Of course, you have the option to download, I don't know. So you can click here, the options, and you can download it. Um, but assuming that you do have online access, and again, we have been do I've been doing it as, an, as a student, for example, in my grad classes. I just click it here. And whatever file that is, well, as I assume na puro PDF lang naman kasi yung na experience ko so far. So, makikita mo siya. Like that. Right? So, you can see it there and blah, blah, blah. So, whatever. Um, uh, PDF file you have, um, you can see it here. So, mga pinagagawa ako sa geometry na. A hyperbolic, yeah. So, anyway, I guess you, you do get my point, I suppose. So, the, the, the point is that they can access it. They, they, can, they can view it here. They can view it here. Okay. Um, at madalas, ito yung ginagawa ng mga studyante rito. Okay, what else? What else do I want to show you? Oh, I don't upload my videos here. I actually upload them on YouTube. Then that's, oh, so I guess now is the time for me to go along with this one. Uh, wait a sec. Okay, let me just, no, not that. Uh -huh. let me see. So to, to, the, to, the, to the person who asked for, um, for the asynchronous lecture, is there a particular section, is there a particular portion of the video that you would be interested in, like the introductory part, the content part, or the, like, like, um, like how it's being set up? May parang special request ba kung saan dito? I mean, I can't play this, the entire thing, right? <laughs> that would just use up the time. At parang nanood lang kayo ng lecture ko. So, in this case, yeah, geometry. Try ko lang. Okay. How, how your, what, how my cool style is in the, oh, okay, you want me to do it right, okay. Uh, sure, I could do that. Um, let me see. Well, first of all, let me show you how I did it, but though, so, so, yeah, so, and most of them were military people. I mean, most of them wow. were geometers. Okay, I, I'm, okay. It's there. Be in the numerator. And because they're the same length, they will also cancel. And finally, you have a, the same story for this. Denominator, numerator, cancel. And so you get one. And you get plus because, because the in circle is inside. You know that all these events are actually inside. So each of these ratios are actually all positive. 
all of the ratios here will be positive. Oh, sorry. Um, can you hear it? I'm just, I just want to make sure that I did share the computer sound. Okay, thank you. This clear? Is this clear? So again, I'll just let you work out the details, but, but, that's, but, but that essentially is it. And again, if you want, the details are in, in fact here in the slides anyway. Okay, so that line, for example, is exactly the statement that two external tangents are congruent. Okay. Okay, so that's the jargon point. Um, so the jargon point comes from Sivians connected to the points of tangency of the in circle. Now there's an, there's an analogous point discovered by Nagel and thus called the Nagel point. Also see, also in the 19th century, so that was the, I don't know, the golden age of projective geometry in modern synthetic Euclidean geometry. So here, instead of the in circle, you have the three X circles involved. But it's the same, it, it's, but it is in the same spirit. What you have here is that you have the points of contact of the X circles on the three legitimate sides in the sense that you have the actual sides and not just the lines, but the actual segments. Okay, to so answer one question, is this PowerPoint then you use your stylus and tab to write in your, yes. So, ito pong stylus at tablet ang aking ginagamit have the dito. The circle here. So, let me just skip. So, yeah, yan, yung mga nag... Result on AC. Yeah, yeah, yung mga ito. on AB. They will be okay. collinear. It's really weird. Sumasabay ako magsalita sa sarili ko. So, sandali. I-mute ko sarili. I-mute. I will mute is the YouTube video. Let me do that. Wait. But this time. All right. So, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, these markings, these annotations were mine. And these were literally just, just like what we have right now, right? I'm doing Zoom. Let me do that now. Um, yeah, so for example, I click annotate, I click draw, um, and yeah. So yeah, I, right, okay, R notice that that YouTube video is on pause. So that, that orange mark is not from the video. I'm doing it right now, real time. So ako to ngayon, ako ito ngayon. So para lang for, em for greater emphasis. So yes, so yeah. I just literally annotate using Zoom. To be clear, though, this is not always what I do. Um, yeah, L let me, let me uh, now that you've asked this stylus and tab um, concern, um, let me address that. So either I do this, and yeah, um, uh, let me skip to those parts where, where there are more writings, I guess. Um, oh. Here's a, here's a proof that uses Menelaus. So in absolute, in absolute value, the reason why it becomes negative one is that the product, the subtraction for these two, that's exactly this green part. So there, um, yeah. So and I'm writing on my two, slides that's exactly the magenta part. as I, as I'm, as I was giving my the lecture. Green and the magenta mm -hmm. triangles have the same area. And using exactly the same argument, all of the three will have the same area, and therefore all of the six have the same area. Because each of the six will be half of each of those three bigger triangles. Okay, so let me stop there. Um, this is the option where you can see yourself. <laughs> in, my, in my current class, I'm not doing that anymore. Or rather, I don't know, I mean, I will mention, I guess, Yuja in, in a bit, but yeah. And making it a rule of four co-emperors at the hierarchy. And um, yeah, it, this was like, this is, it was this um, minus two square. Wait, 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 wait. Learned algebra. I, yeah. And if there's anything that we can say that is of note in terms of mathematics in that time, it would be the compendia. It would be the collections of mathematical works, not the discovery of anything new, of the Hellenistic Greeks. Okay. So for example, you would have the Roman. If it were the uploaded. 
schools established by the church. So yeah, and if there's anything, oh, here we go. So let me just for emphasis, of, just a few hours ago. Okay. You see, I saw it, right? So um, let me just. So this was just a few hours ago. That homework um, three is due on. Saturday. This is my history of math class uh, right now. The prophet. Uh, show that those two answers are consistent. So I'm, as you can see, uh, I'm writing on it two curves, and he's hoping that this might be an easier problem to do, finding the point of intersection. Okay, so that's essentially the first um, married Clotilde, the Abbasid um, Arabs of the East, uh, that the papal states were allied with, you know, with the Franks, right? Okay, so anyway, so that's that. Son of Bonaccio, so his father is named Bonaccio. And unlike the friar Alexandre and John of Halifax, who is a school teacher, Bonacci was a merchant uh, initially. Well, his father was also an Italian merchant. By the way, before I move on to Fibonacci, let me just mention that this image here actually depicts, so this is the Margarita Philosophica. So this, um, this essentially, she essentially symbolizes, I don't know, learning or something or philosophy or mathematics. As you can see here, I don't know if you can see it. You see here, arithmetica, and here you see what is this? Wait a minute. Tipus. Anyway, my point is, I want you to notice, this is the name of Boethius, and this is the name of Pythagoras. Pythagoras. Right. So you can see Pythagoras using an abacus. <laughs> and you can see Boethius, who lived, a Roman mathematician, if you remember, using the Hindu Arabic numerals. And my point being here is that this is this image essentially captures the the clash of those days between the Hindu Arabic numerals, which are the modern ones. Remember, Boethius is a more modern mathematician than Pythagoras, who lived in the ancient. Although this is not an accurate. Oh, ko na rin kayo ng ano? <laughs> ng the history of the clash between Roman numerals and Hindu Arabic numerals. So, yeah, the, as I said, the, uh, I I am teaching history of mathematics right now this summer. Okay. Oh, by the way, so as I said, this is not the only option. So let me open, let me go to my one to eight, my geometry again, because in the early days of my geometry classes, I used not only uh, directly on, directly annotating using this, like in Zoom, like using the annotate option and then um, using my stylus. Um, I was also using, you know, OneNote. You also have that option, of course. Okay. So, nitong mga panahong ito, hinati you ko pa yung aking screen. You only have 21 <laughs> lines in this drawing I have. So, how do you get the correct number of points? What is the problem with this number? Well, the problem with this number is you're, you're double counting certain pair. You're double counting certain lines. May For example, pa po buhok po dyan. I have this point A, B, So, ganun na po patagal ang lockdown. C, in this count, I'm separately counting the pairs. So let me just put that as an aside. I have the pair AB, I have the pair AC, and the pair So AC. as you can see, I'm writing on OneNote, not using the annotate option. So if you're familiar with Microsoft OneNote, this is not, again, the only app I know. I mean, I'm going to show you another one actually in a minute. It, these three are distinct pairs, and so they're counted separately in this count, but they determine only one line because A, B, and C are, you know, collinear. So we have to, we have to divide. So in order to remove this um, double, actually not double, but triple count, what we have to do is we have to know how many times is each line counted in this, in this combination number? And that's not actually difficult to see. I already did it here. Um, it seems, at least here, that every line is counted three times. And that's not actually difficult to show um, because, okay, how do we do this? How do I say this? Um, whoops. Exactly. Every line has three points. So because each line 
and that's one of the axioms. It's exactly axiom um, axiom two. So axiom two states that each line is on three points. So in Take order to let me give context first. So this was a geometry class. This was the the discussion on axiomatic systems. So in this case, the reason why I wanted two 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 apps together uh, simultaneously on the screen is I needed a list. So as you can see, well, now let me use Zoom's annotate. <laughs> so I needed this. I needed a certain list to be on one page and then I needed to write. You know how we, when you have, so in a usual classroom, right? Sometimes meron kayong sinusulat sa isang side of the board. Tapos sa kabilang side of the board, don't, nagdaragdag kayo ng mga sinusulat na detalye. So this is exactly what's happening here. So I need this list of axioms uh, fixed or pinned here on this side of the board. And then I need to actually do my arguments and my proofs here, my computations here. So yeah, so, so that's why I'm showing you this. This is also one, one thing that I did uh, where I do, did not only use the annotate capability of Zoom, but also, um, but also use a certain, um, what do I call this? An external app. And now speaking of external app, there's another one, which actually I just recently found out. So I'm not yet an expert on it. Well, neither am I an expert on this anyway. So let me share that. Um, kung ayaw nyo ng OneNote, I think yun yung gusto ko sabihin. Kung ayaw nyo ng OneNote, meron pang isang, at ito ay libre na app. <laughs> uh, you can just download it from the net. Uh, it's called Write. So it's by, as you can see, wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, let me okay. Let me let me encircle this one. Stylus Labs. Yeah, Stylus Labs. That's another one. Um, uh, this is an actual app for writing. So, for example, so right now I'm not yet using the Stylus Labs um, app, but um, I'm using just the Zoom um, annotation. This is still Zoom. This th these orange lines. But now let me use the actual, ta uh, the actual app. So I'm not going to annotate by Zoom. But I'm going to use my usual regular writing capability. So yeah. So not, I learned about this app because my, my grad class professor um, in algebraic topology actually used this in our, um, in our classes. So yeah. So ako nagsulat nito just kanina. Just so you have an example. So I don't know. So, I don't know, um, let, let N be a manifold. I, I really don't know what to write. So the point is, yeah, so I'm writing right now. <laughs> uh, what else? Um, write or the annotate functions are great for chem classes too. We have professor from I. Oh, you, you're familiar with write? Because if you are, that's great. Because it, it seems that this is a great app. I'm liking it. I think it's, it's, it's a matter of how it's converting. Kung napansin nyo kasi sa Zoom, parang medyo uh, mabagal yung... Well, I don't know if it's really Zoom or it's just my laptop with a very low random access memory. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. So, um, kasi marami akong apps na nakabukas siguro. I don't know. So, um, dahil mabagal, yung, yung isang pagkurba mo halimbawa ng J o kaya ng, ng circle, nagiging, ra nagiging jagged. Pag, pag, uh, pag, pag input dun sa screen mismo. So it's a matter of kung nakakahabol ba yung kung real, literally real time to the, to the last, to the ac accurate to the last second yung, yung, yung pag-input yung pag, uh, sa screen at yung pag-input ng kamay mo. Um, so yeah, but it seems that this app sort of adjusts. For example, I can write in cursive here. As I like... like um, pero yun nga, medyo mabagal kasi nag-share nag, nag ako ngayon sa Zoom. Eh. So, yeah. So, I can write, I don't know. I can write cursive. Okay lang naman yata. Well, it's not a perfect world. Yeah, mabagal pa rin. Every time, every, every time I do that undo, um, it has to wait. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. What was the question? Pero my external gadget pa rin connected to your computer and still using myself. Yes, po. So yung OneNote po ay isang 
ay, ay isang, ano tawag doon? Ay isang application. So, isa siyang software. So, do, yung, yung, yung OneNote mismo at ito ring Stylus Labs ay application na inyong in-open sa computer. Ngunit, you still have this outside. So, for example, as I do this, hello, hello, right. So, yeah, they have to go together. You can't have only one of, one of them. I mean, some of my students don't have a tab, so they literally just use their mouse, which is, I guess, an option. Uh, no, I don't think it's an option for, for Stylus Labs, but for OneNote, you can use your mouse because I, 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 I experienced um, having students come to my office hours to ask, to ask about homework problems. And because they ask about homework problems, syempre, they will show their solutions, right? Or like, ah, ganito yung idea ko, right? So I, I was thinking I could, I could split this triangle into ganito ganyan. So hindi ipapakita niyang ganyan. Although syempre, mas mabagal kasi mouse ang gamit. Iba talaga kung may ganito ka. Hindi ko pinopromote itong particular brand na to. Ang pinopromote ko yung idea na uh, convenient na may ganito. I think that's all I want to say. Um, about, I mean, in terms of stylus and tab. Okay, so, as, so all I'm trying to say is you have this option. Um, of course, I mean, I think pwede kayong mag... Nasaan yung... Meron akong, meron akong PDF na doon... So, kuminsan, although ito hindi ko pa ginawa sa class, ginawa ko ito, ginawa ko ito meeting, meeting a professor. Like, like editing a certain... Not editing. How do I write? How do I say this? Like, like, like writing on an actual PDF. I mean, if you're familiar with PDF, there's actually a way, dep uh, there's actually a way, depending on what kind of PDF Adobe Acrobat Reader you have, you also, you have, you might have more options, like, you know, directly edit, comment on the PDF. So I sometimes do that. I'm, I mean, for example, I sign my documents using this. Uh, paperless halos lahat dito ngayon, lalo ng, ng, ng nitong COVID. Uh, anong gusto kong ipakita? Gusto kong hanapin yung Usher. Can I see that? Wait a minute. Um, uh, let me just uh, uh, open that app. Uh, open that file. Usher um, holomorphic curves. So this is not for my class. This is a research thing. Where is it? Usher notes. Okay, I hope I hope I opened the right file, the one where I Oh, yeah, yeah, so let me share this. For example, sometimes there are people who prepare their notes already in actual PDF. And then you just want to annotate on directly on the PDF instead of In my case, I have presentations, right? Like PowerPoint, but that that's not actually PowerPoint, that's a PDF file in itself, pero naka PowerPoint form lang ang itsura niya. Pero pwede rin na yung mismong document mo ay notes mo na, which is not a bad thing. Um, let's see. Where's news here? Okay, here. Um, so, pwede rin ganun. So, kunwari, mabawa ito, although like, hindi ko to lecture. Lecture ito ng isang prof sa University of Georgia. Uh, wait. How do I hear? For example, this, right? Um... Although this is more for my own uh, private consumption, but what I'm saying is technically, I do have the option of doing this in my classes, like type my own notes first, and then, you know, annotate here using the capability of Adobe itself. Um, like, yeah, these are my comments. These are my annotations. So for example, I can, I don't know, um, that. All right. So for example, ito, ito Adobe lang talaga ito. Wala akong ginawa, ginamit na external app for this one. So just the internal capabilities of, of Adobe Acrobat Reader to, you know, edit your, uh, your, your PDFs. And as you can see, for my own consumption, I have made a lot of annotations on it. What I'm trying to say is you can do this actually in a class. 
because I remember one of my professors, grad class professors, did this. He had notes, and then bilog bilog lang siya, highlight highlight lang siya, ganun. So I guess uh, that's a possibility. All right. So yeah, um, there was a question. Do you have a list of the free apps that Sir is using? Uh, I don't know if the, if a, a list is even needed. I mean, it's just Canvas and as I said, ginagamit ko lang Zoom. You miss mong annotate of Zoom. As in, literally, I, I just write on it directly, real time. No, no external app there, just Zoom itself. Now, if you're not satisfied, there's OneNote. Um, or, as I said, Stylus Labs. Stylus Labs. Okay. And the, the name of the app um, is, just to make that clear, is this. So, Stylus Labs Write. And so in the fall, in this coming fall, online pa rin po kami. So na-assign po sa akin ay maging teacher uli, although topology. So mas, mas maraming math content yun. So mas masulat yun, topology. So ang plano ko, ito, ito ang gagamitin. Uh, mas magsusulat ako rather than mga litrato ng mga mathematician in the history of mathematics. So, so it really depends. I guess it depends on the kind of course you're teaching as well, right? So, so I'm, I'm, I'm showing you these options where either mas mas maraming sulat than, than pictures, mas maraming nakatype, or hybrid, like yung pinagsabay ko yung one note at yung, yung presentation. So, yeah. Or, okay, I'm, again, I'm not at all advocating that all education must be online from now on. But I must say, however, I am against the idea of an online uh, education. Um, uh, I did appreciate the fact that I can, so as you can see, I can real time share whatever is the app that I'm looking at to everyone else. So for example, I did that with my Math 181 with my history and let me, let me direct you to those portions of my lectures in, in history of math to emphasize that point. Um, let me go back to the YouTube video. So as you will see, let me go to 181 again. Uh, there are portions here where I made use of YouTube in order to enhance my teaching because I am humble enough to admit okay. that there are other people in YouTube who might be able to explain it better or funnier. So let me see which lecture that was. Oh uh, yeah, so for, so for example, so as I said, ngay, ngay, this time that um, I've already experienced uh, teaching in full Zoom uh, last quarter, now that I have more experience a bit, um, I already know that, yeah, maybe there's another better way. So for example, here, said I that, don't type uh, everything anymore. Actually, it's not because I... See, I'm I sure leave this important. blank and I, I just <laughs> so, annotate there directly just using to Zoom's annotate option. But definitely, as Wait. I write my proof well, but of the, this theorem, then that you want to get a contradiction out of this. Well, essentially the idea is, whenever you have a finite list of primes, there is actually a way of automatically getting another prime, not the next prime, right? Well, again, there's no systematic way of, doing, of, of exhausting all the primes right away. But there is always a way of getting, getting another bigger prime if you give me a list of a finite list of primes. And it's actually very simple. You just consider the, the integer, let's say, big M to be, take the product of all these guys. So that's, that's one integer. Then add one. Okay, so yeah, so I'll end it there. So yeah, so yeah, so here I'm writing on, on my, I'm not writing on my PDF using Adobe. I'm using Zoom. I, I'm using Zoom's um, annotate. So just using the annotate uh, feature of Zoom. Um, so hindi yan, so hindi yan nasa-save. Hindi yan nasa-save dun sa PDF, yung nakasulat na yan. So nasa-save lang yan dun sa video, dun sa meeting. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, yeah, I feel weird. Uh, as I was watching this and listening to myself, I'm, I'm automatically in my brain trying to critic myself. But anyway, so I guess that's just my nature. Um, let me show you one where I actually appreciate this on the mode, <laughs> where I actually use the power of the internet 
to enhance whatever I was discussing. I'm not sure where Sheldon Cooper came in. Was it this? I think it's this. Sorry, yeah. Let me end with this one. This was on Archimedes, if I remember correctly. And that's Eratosthenes. Uh, wait. Yeah, right now, may, may annotation capability po yung Zoom mismo. So yeah, so for example, so after my lecture, and not after, so, sorry, in, in, in the middle of my lecture, I suddenly remembered a certain, a certain nice scene in, the, in, in a certain sitcom called The Big Bang Theory, which explains a certain physics, um, certain physics concept, but in a funny way. And so I know that my students know, know Big Bang Theory, and they might appreciate it. So assuming that you have not watched Big Bang Theory ever in your life. So wait a minute, uh, wait a minute. Yeah, it's said that Archimedes, the ancient Greek mathematician, discovered the principle of displacement while taking a bath. <laughs> Better, it has a gold crown. You see, the king wondered how much gold was in it and charged Archimedes with coming up with the solution. Because the crown was irregularly shaped, there was no way to mathematically determine its volume. But while bathing, Archimedes realized he could immerse the crown and measure the amount the water rose. <laughs> There you go. So that's essentially Sheldon's explanation of um, what, what was what was that? What was I talking about? That principle of Archimedes. Um, uh, what, what, what? I need to make it the screen. Yeah, I was transitioning back to my slides at this point in time. Okay. So go back to my go. boring <laughs> slides <laughs> compared to that um, amusing. Um, amusing clip from Big Bang Theory. Uh, what, was I, what was I about to say? Oh yeah, so the, we see it for the first time in Archimedes on the floating bodies. And, and the, the important mathematical history um, nugget that, I, that you have to get from this is that Archimedes made it into a mathematical endeavor. So yeah, this is that same story where, uh, you know, Archimedes, exclaim Eureka, I found it. So this is that same story. By the way, if you watch that full episode of the Big Bang Theory, that in that time, um, as, again, as you should be just refreshed and this should be not the first time you're seeing this story, um, Julius Caesar rise, uh, power rises in the sense that, well, the people, the Roman people like him because, you know, he's able to expand the empire and so on. The senators, got scared of him, of becoming a dictator, and so they kill him in the eyes of oh, Mars. Okay. Um, yeah. so, so as I was saying, the, the whole point of me showing that is you can actually take advantage of this online mode. Again, there's no, there is no, no advocacy here at all of me saying that it should be like this forever. Of course not. I'm just saying that while it lasts, uh, you know, Enjoy it while it lasts, I, I guess. <laughs> uh, you know what they say. All right, um, what else? Uh, let me go back to Piazza, right? Uh, no, not Piazza. That's another story. Um, let me go back to Canvas. Um, what else do you have available in Canvas? Um, let's see. Actually, there is a separate, well, in this case, I did not have this. I did not have to do this because I did not give this anyway. There is a separate, uh, you know, um, how do you call this? There is a separate uh, module or link for quizzes as well. Um, and there is also a Google Drive where you can upload your files. There is um, actually technically a chat link where technically or, or, like, the, or like, in, like in principle, like you and I guess the students can chat. Um, yeah, although I've, I've never, I've never had the, the need to, I've never had the, uh, I never had the need to use this. 
Um, and yeah, and actually there are Zoom and Uja links. Let me explain this Uja thing. Yeah, so for example, uh, let me see. In, in this, uh, back, in, back in the spring, I wasn't recording in the cloud. But in Math 181, in my current class, I am recording in the cloud. So there are two options when you record this, right? This Zoom lecture. You can either record on your computer or in the cloud. Automatically, it gets uploaded in the cloud. Um, if you do that, then uh, apparently in our Canvas, it's automatically here. Yeah, going back again, what can you say about cheating in the exams? Yeah, 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 good question. What can I say about cheating in exams and any tips how to avoid them? Okay, uh, let me share with you what I did last. Um, or ra rather, let me sh share with you what but my grad class professors did for, for, well, not for me, I am already past that say, but for some of my colleagues who had to take an exam under them. Um, they limited their time. Like for example, um, they, as I said, what you can do in, in Zoom, go to assignments, you can, you can choose to, you can make your uh, homework available only in a certain window of time. Let me, where is that? Yeah, so for example, here, oh, oh dito hindi ko direct, direct, uh, directly into the box. What I did was I typeset it in a PDF file first, which I uploaded. I uploaded in this part, the files folder. And then I, I guess I, I, I have to, kailangan i-demo ko. So kunwari, kunwari sineset up ko palang yung homework, no? Tapos yung homework ay meron akong i-refer na link to a certain PDF file which contains the questions. For example, this case, yeah. So ang gagawin ko, so yeah, so kunwari type ako, no? So uh, see this file, I don't know. So pwede yung pindutin dito, um, go to, so as you can see, you have here links and then go to, for example, I know that I put it, uh, no, 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 not, not links. I know that my assignment is uploaded in this folder, files. I go to files, I go to homework seat works where I upload my homework and seat work questions. And then I go here, like again, homework six. And that's, that's, and then I just click it and it automatically puts it here. Uh, it automatically creates a link on the homework page that directly directs you to that, uh, to that file, which contains the questions. So that's exactly how I created this link. So let me just erase that because that's not what I need. So, so let's just go back to this. And, and so for example, so tapos na, I put points there. I assigned it, um, I, I, I grouped it under assignments. I allowed them to either type their, their, ans their answers and responses directly or upload a PDF or whatever. In fact, you also have the power, power talaga. You, have, you also have the power to control what kinds of files that you can allow dot jpg dot pdf oops although in my case i did not do that i let them upload whatever what whatever they want so yeah as long as it works um what else and yeah as i've said meron ditong unlimited versus limited uh this po this portion is essentially um how do i say this um the meaning of unlimited is the student can can um can submit their work as many times as they want, as they can, as long as it's before the deadline you set here in the due and the until portion, okay? So yeah, so yeah. So now going back to that question about what do you say, what can I say about cheating? This is one of the ways that you can avoid it. Lagyan nyo ng window, kasi ganun ang ginagawa ng mga professor dito. So they put the, they, usually they only assign like a three hour window like for a, re wait a minute, it depends on the exam, of course. Sometimes it's actually more stringent, like narrower, like just a one hour or one and a half hour or a two hour window. A two hour window for a one and a half hour exam, probably the remaining 30 minutes to allow them to upload, uh, like if they experience internet problems. Although that is, I don't know, I don't have any opinions about that part though, because I do know that there are issues about internet accessibility even here. And this is already America. <laughs> so mayroon pa rin nakaka-experience ng ganun. 
eh lalo na diyan alam i mean naka-experience ako nang napuputulan ng internet diyan so i do i really don't know but yeah so that is one one thing that that the people that the professors here did um they they uh they narrowed down the window by which they can access the questions and not only access the questionnaire but also the link that they have to click in order to submit so you know pagka hindi nila naabutan yon um uh, anong gagawin nila i-email kanila so kung nare email nila sa email nila sa yo yung kanilang sagot tapos i don't know about you but you can you can impose a stringent deadline you can impose you can impose a stringent rule such as i will only accept work submitted by can- via canvas although of course this is a time of pandemic so there are also issues about as i said internet accessibility so what if hindi nila kasalanan na nasaraduhan sila tapos ano again na experience natin namin yun dito um and let me just say that because it is the time of a pandemic um the, the compromise is medyo lenient kami so yeah i mean i cannot promise at all that you can avoid with all certainty cheating i mean yeah although although there are other ways so pero ito medyo external na talaga kasi i have i i, I ta and yeah I, i was a teaching assistant for a certain class where there was a book the online din and then um randomly hindi randomly generated there's a pool of questions and then the students have the students get different questions online but similar of course i mean for example i don't know um integration by parts uh pare parehas na may mga log, may na may integral ln log, logarithm x pero iba iba may ln 2x may ln x may may ln x plus 1 siguro dun sa isa and so on so at least magkakaiba pa rin kahit paano pero magkakapareho para hindi pa rin so that there's not much disparity between you know in in the in the level of difficulty of the questions that they're answering and also the content that that question addresses because that's always how assessment should be done you have to make sure that it addresses something an objective so in order to avoid that na iba iba ng objective yun na test so may minor may minor differences between the items also another option is for example what this what this the what this app not app what I guess it's an app. Uh, what this online book or publisher does is it also um, shuffles the questions, and the way the questions are being given, I ordered. Kailangan mo sagutin in the order na binigay sa yun ng computer. So hindi mo pwedeng silipin yung I don't know kung may, kung may kasama ka sa bahay na kaklase mo rin kung dormer kayo. Pero again, COVID era ngayon, so hindi ko lang kung pwede yun kung 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 maraming gano'n ang sitwasyon. So, kunwari, kung gano'n, no? may kaklase ka na kasama mo, kasama mo. O, yeah. Um, pwedeng, pwedeng mangyari, uh, nakashuffle. Um, pero yun ay sa isang external na ano, sa isang external na libro. Hindi ko alam kung kung kaya yun dito. Ang alam ko lang, pwede mong i-assign ng ganito. Bukod doon, kung tutuusin, you can also, ano yung pinaka-importante ang kailangan kong mabanggit? I, I did not do this. Whoops, sorry. Wait. I I I did not actually do this because I'd never had the need to do so. But um, technically, in the quizzes part, because usually quiz is what you call something that is timed, right? You you in tipong gagawin mo on on the spot sort of, and then you have to submit after a certain amount of time. Unlike a homework where you assign it and you're given I don't know a day or a week. I don't know, depending on the, what kind of homework we're talking about. But for a quiz, it's like it's a sit-down quiz. So nakadis so 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 Canvas um so ang nakadefine yata sa Canvas na ang quiz ang ibig sabi ng quiz ay ganon. So pag nag-add ka ng quiz, if you create a quiz, here are your options. Um yeah sure. So details you can put the, your instructions like uh, show all your solutions or whatever. Anong gusto niyo sabihin? Uh, blah blah blah, and then you can classify here. Kung anong uri ng quiz ba ito? Kung ito ba a practice quiz? Meaning, hindi. Sh- 
I guess, uh, practice nga, no? So, parang hindi siya graded para lang merong practice yung mga sadyante. Graded quiz, yung usual na quiz, or a survey. We, I've never saw, I've never seen the need for a graded survey. I did see a non-graded survey. For example, in our case, just a few weeks ago, um, we surveyed our students what would be the best times for them to have office hours. So, sa ungraded, dito sa quiz namin nilagay yun. Hindi dahil quiz siya, ngunit sa pamamagitan ng platform na ito, maaari mo na rin itanungin yung mga, isurvey yung isa, mga isadyante mo kung Yun nga, uh, kailan kayo available para kunwari sa isang review session? O kaya kailan kayo available for office hours para ma-schedule kayong office hours considering also your preferences para hindi naman parang autocratic na ako lang ang magde-decide kung kailan ako available. So, yun yung isang gamit ng ungraded survey. At and, and now, as I said, yung graded quiz, so yeah, so you can, yun nga, so pwede mong ishuffle pwede kang maglagay ng time limit. So again, ito nga yung sinasabi ko na pwede kayong maglagay ng time limit dito. And what else should I say? Um, you also have the option to allow multiple attempts, multiple answers. Again, it depends really on what kind of quiz you're gonna do and what kind of goal you're, you have in mind. Um, what else? And the usual options. But let me go to the actual question making process so when you add the new question yeah you have actually the option here what kind of questions you're gonna do multiple choice put a b c d here you can ask a true false question fill in the blanks um numerical answer so ilalagay mo dito yung tamang sagot uh, error margin kasi kung minsan yung mga sagot ay inaalaw nila yung mga may decimal places although Usually in my classes, I puro exact answers lang naman. Again, I'm 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 addressing those with numerical answer uh, subjects, right? So yeah, so you can choose that. Uh, what else? Uh, isang question lang yan, no? Tapos pwede ka magdagdag. Add new question. So ito yung question two. Ah, uh, yeah. So pwede mo pwede ko naman i-edit uli yan. So this is question one. This is question two. Uh, pwedeng essay. So, well, kailan ko ginagamit ang essay? Proof. Kapag proof ang hinahanap mo or argument or, you know, some reasoning for uh, why a certain theorem must hold, I don't know, or reasoning for a true or false question. Of course, you can make it just a true or false question or a formula question. Point is, there's, there's lots of options. I'm not, do, I'm not saying, though, that, that this will cover everything. Um, yeah. So yeah, so 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 ang so ang kaya ko to pinakita because one of one of the professors I served for as a teaching assistant is his section. Every time I go to section, I give a quiz like this, which he created, my, my prof, the, the professor created, and what the students do, they answer them online. At in 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 the uh, in that case, if I remember correctly, all of his questions were multiple choice type. So essentially, yung mga vector calculus ito eh. Yung mga tanong niya yung tipong, uh, which, uh, you know, pag, if you take the cross product of two vectors or blah, 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 then it's um, which of the following will be, you know, the correct cross product or something like that. So may multiple choice. Tapos, ang gusto kong emphasize, they have to answer that in the same, in the right order. So that does not allow people, so assuming that you shuffled, for different people, um, that I guess um, addresses things somewhat. But again, it's not the perfect um, solution to to that um, issue. So let me just cancel that because I'm not really, I don't really want. Oh, by the way, let me just uh, say that yeah. So while if if you're in the process of doing these things, um, uh, you don't have to worry so much because un until you until you click that publish button this is not viewable to the students and of course and of, in fact speaking of viewing by the students you also have the option to see what your students are seeing let me go to that so when you go to home was is it home yeah so there when you go to your home page which by the way you have the option to edit 
kung ano yung gusto mo maging homepage, kung gusto mo bang yung, yung kalendaryo, which is yung nasa syllabus. It's essentially, the syllabus link uh, shows you kung anong mga nangyayari sa klase mo. Like, nakasaad sa bawat pet sa kung ano ang mga yung an, kung anong mga requirement as anong mga deadline nila nakalista chronologically dun sa syllabus. So, yung syllabus, ang idea na syllabus ay literally yung new schedule at nang na may detalye to the last detail. Um, okay. Um, in fact, some, at least one of my professors actually used this link, outcomes, din na sinulat nila dito lahat ng objectives ng course nila. So, you have that option to do that. Or if you want to add extra, extra stuff, you can create a new module. I use this to upload, uh, to create a link that directs my students to the YouTube videos. Uh, let me go to that. Um, yeah, Math 181 yata yun. History. Uh, yeah, in this case, I edited it. Ginawa kong ganito. Para convenient sa kanila, pag bukas ng home, diretso, kung, kung manonood sila ng online, nung, nung video na naka-upload sa YouTube, na recorded, ayan, isang pindot lang. So, well, dalawang pindot yata. Oh, yeah, isang pindot. Hindi ko inano yung pops. Metal to, to not paper, sorry. From metal to so, paper. So, yeah. So, that's um, that. Um, what else do I want to say? Uh, yeah, so I also edit, so I use the modules option in order to add this link. Um, again, hindi ko pa na, noong mga panahong ito, hindi ko pa naisip na going home page ay yung links agad. At hindi ko na in-edit out ito. So I, I just kept that there. Uh, and as I was saying earlier, you as actually have the option to see what your students are seeing so that you're aware. So when you go to, for example, here, student view, um, you can see how they're faring, uh, how they're seeing it, rather. See, you are currently logged into student view. Um, so this is what they see. So I guess when I go to Grace, ano kaya makikita ko? Oh, you only see yourself. You only see your own. So as you can see, for example, there, you can see your homework one, whatever is your score. Of course, here it says missing because this is a test student. It's not an actual student. So wala talaga siyang homework na sinabmit malamang. So yeah, but, but, but normally you will have some things saying here that you submitted and then you'll see the score here na input ko or nung teaching assistant ko kapag nag-grade na siya. At makikita na rin ng sudyante rito yung kanilang, uh, yung kanilang grade. For example, here. Assignments, the grade will be computed here and the final paper grade will be here and the total will be here. The same way that I as a grad student saw this in, my, in some of my grad classes before when, when grades still mattered. <laughs> so in, in the first few, yeah. Nung, uh, yeah. Nung hindi pa research mode. So yeah, so yan. Uh, yan yung nakikita nila. Um, may hindi pa ako na ano. Um, sure. Uh, there's also this Yuja thing, the one that you're seeing here, Yuja. Although I'm not sure if it's something that everyone does or ev because I think what happened here was Yuja partnered with Canvas, partnered with UCSC. Uh, but the point is that the capability of this external app is Whoops, sorry. The capability of that is, so again, you, there was no Yuja last spring. It was just this summer. And I still, I uploaded my lectures in YouTube. Apparently, I don't need to do that anymore because when you go to Yuja, oh, sorry, when, when you record your, your lecture, uh, in the cloud, directly, directly uploaded in the cloud, then this is where you will find it. You click Yuja, and then uh, it will direct you to your recordings. So for example, here are the recordings of my uh, 181 lectures. So as you can see, which technically I did not have to upload in YouTube. It's just that I already announced to my students before and didn't want to go through the hassle of um, of announcing that no, you just view it here. So if they want to view it here, that's fine. And that's fine, they have the link. 
if they don't want to, they can view it here. That's just, I'm giving them all the freedom that they can have. Uh, yeah. Mm. But again, this is something that I don't know if is part if it is part of of Canvas itself organically. I don't think so. I think it's an external thing. Yeah. Um, what else? I think I I want to say another thing which is helpful. Uh, yeah. Well, there's a calendar uh, where you can schedule stuff. Uh, although I don't have it here. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm forgetting something. I, I think I want to... S I, I'm forgetting something. Oh, here. So, so yeah. Uh, this is the, the level of convenience this gives you. This platform tells you even like, Oi, may grade dan ka na, oi. <laughs> so, oh, grade homework too. Let's actually look at that. So, how does it work? So, the student uploads their, their files, right? Their homeworks. So... You can check, you can grade this stuff there, like literally. So for example, the student, hold on. Let's just wait for it to, to, to load. It's taking forever. Oh, there it is. So yeah, so see? So in my case, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. They just take, they write what, wherever, they take a picture of it, they upload it. Kasi hindi ko restrict yung file type. So pwede JPEG siguro. I don't know kung anong ginamit nila. Um, so yeah. Mm, ganyan. Tapos pwede ka mag-check dito. Kasi pwede ka rin mag-annotate dito if I'm not mistaken. Uh, ito ba yun? Hindi ko maalala. There. <laughs> Although wait, I shouldn't do that because I'm not so, it's not my job. Wait a <laughs> Let me, oh my God. Remove that. Okay, yes, but you see that you can do it, right? Although this is more of a personal preference, usually what I would do, oh, no, 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 no. It's just that there was, an, there was a time that I had to check just a few uh, files. So I just downloaded them and uh, annotated them using Adobe. The point is you don't have to do that. You can do it directly here. So, yeah. And then after that, then you put the grade here, whatever, whatever score he has. And you can also put a comment. I think this is also one advantage of this platform. You can put a comment, which means that they can comment here and I can comment here. Yeah. So, yeah. Was there a question? Would you know, adva no, advantage and disadvantage of Canvas compared to D2L and Google Classroom. I don't know what, I don't know what D2L is. Second, Google Classroom, I've only been a spectator of it. I've never used it. Um, how do I say this? And this is not because Canvas is better. I really don't know. I'm only using this for the simple reason that this is what, ito na yung kinalakihan ko <laughs> pagdating ko rito. Like pagdating ko rito, Canvas na agad yung mong ginagawa lahat. So, and bilang law of inertia, gusto ko lang gawin ay mag-math at hindi mag-alala kung anong mas magandang option. Sinunod, sinunod ko na lang kung ano yung binigay nila sa akin. So, yun lang. So, I can't say kung anong mas okay. Uh, you're welcome po. Okay. So, yan. So, gan ganito mag-grade dito. Again, hindi ko... <laughs> no way am I declaring this the best way. I, I really don't know. And then, paano bumalik? Ah, uh, ito. Pindutin ko to. Yeah. So, there you go. Uh, I think that's all. I, I think I'm already, I'm already out of time. I mean, I, I do have to allow questions, right? So yeah, that's it. Um, that's it. That, that's, I can think that's all I have to share, like what I'm doing right now. Any questions? Hmm, did I have problems migrating to Canvas? First of all, I did not migrate <laughs> because this would be, I mean, take a long. Ah, kasi hindi ako nag I, 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 I guess, uh, wait, wait a minute. Oo nga, take a long. 
UP has a vle, right? I did not use Moodle. Yeah. So I really don't know. But I know that there's a vle where you, it's like a platform by UP, right? Where you can do this stuff. And to be, to be honest, I, I, you, see, that's, that's how uninformed I am. And it's entirely my fault. I just didn't use it. That's why I don't even know. <laughs> but the point is, yeah, so I see. Okay. So, hindi ko lang kung meron kayong equivalent na ganun. So, kaya, kaya nyo tinatanong yung word na migrate. Kasi hindi ako nag-migrate. Hindi ako ever nag-ganito eh. So, sponge ako nung nat- natanggap ko to. Kaya okay lang. It was fine. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I mean, easy is a, easy is a deceptive word. <laughs> so, it was okay. But it's not, an, but it, but it wasn't Mount Everestly difficult. I guess that's what I want to say. As I said, I, I really, I'm sorry. It's just that I don't know these other, other uh, platforms. Yeah. As I said, I'm, I've only um, been a spectator to Google Classroom. Ed, Edmodo, I don't know what Edmodo is. Mm-hmm. All right. So a lot of the questions have been raised and already answered on the chat box. Are there any other questions? What do you do for students who can't access all the time? Yun nga. So kapag hindi nakaka-access yung mga, yung mga students, uh, una, yun, yun, nga yung, yun nga yung compromise, di ba? So kahit may live na lecture, for those who can attend live, um, ginagawa kong, nire-record ko. Although, hindi ko lang kung directive yun, more of um, in-encourage lang sa amin by the, by the admin of the math department. Um, ako naman, I actually agree with that. Na baka dapat i-record para nga kasi kung ako 'yon, wala akong internet, mas stress ako. <laughs> Hindi ako makakita ng klase, di ba? So 'yon. So in terms of attending the lecture kung wala kang access, uh, kung wala kang access agad or hindi guaranteed na may access ka at that time, kunwari may kasabay kang kapatid, that's a, that's that's a very real problem. Or literally na put na ewan ko kung anong naputol kuryente o yung mismong internet nung mismong saktong oras na yun. Of course, this is still premised, um, th- this still rests on the premise that you can access it some other time. Now, if you can't access at all, I honestly don't know what to say. All I can say is, so far, I didn't have that problem yet na wala silang access ever. May access sila, pero pwedeng hindi lang saktong parehas na oras. Kaya, kaya recorded. Ngunit kung walang access talaga, I, I will have to know from my department what we're gonna do. It's just that I have never experienced it. Kaya nga sabi ko, I am not in a position to advocate for anything because I really don't know the difficulties, uh, the vicissitudes surrounding this new mode. It really depends on, you know, where you are and um, what, what, uh, what challenges you're facing, right? So yeah. Long story short, I don't know. Right. Anything more from our participants? Was preparation longer if remote compared to face to face? I can sincerely say yes. <laughs> so I am with everyone who clamors that. This is much more work, but it is what it is. We have to do what we can, um, but it is. Um, and I think, uh, and well, let me contextualize that, right? I, I'm not literally just complaining here. I'm just saying objectively that it is more work in the sense that usually kasi in my case, kapag pupunta ako sa class, sometimes I don't need to fully write all details on my notebook or on my written notes. Because sometimes they're just in my head, right? And then once in my head, it goes to my, to my hands and goes on the board. Now, because I'm using a PowerPoint and real, est- real estate is so limited, the screen is so limited, the space is so limited that I have to plan ahead which stuff I'm going to write and which stuff, I, which stuff I'm going to type. 
So just just thinking about that, like like type set, typing all those presentations, um, matagal siyang iprep compared sa derecho problem uh, definition. Tapos ma na, nasa utak ko na tasi susulat ko lang. So yeah, answer is yes. It was longer, definitely longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We still have um, a few minutes more. Maybe have time for uh, two more questions. From our friends from IHNF, do you have questions regarding how to do lab work? I'm sorry, what? Do I have questions? I don't know. Uh, John, this is Jenny. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Uh, yeah, this uh, we have courses kasi that really needs to be in a. We have cooking classes, for example. We have nutrition under the College of Human Ecology. So, Apo. Uh, meron kayong, I know you're teaching math, but do you have other courses similar to that? Na? You mentioned earlier that there are labs there that really needs face to face. So, how could these uh -huh. departments use technology, for example, uh, in their um, in their lab class that really requires face to face. Parang uh, half ba? Could be yeah, I understand. Yeah. Thank you, John. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. Unfortunately, I might not be I might not be the best resource for that. As I said, kasi nga wala kami lab. So, well, I mean, wala kami I mean, physical lab. Um, the only lab is research group ni advisor. <laughs> um, so, hindi ko alam kung anong ginagawa kunwari ng mga bio. Kasi sila yung mga alam ko na pumupunta pa rin. Chem, ganun. So, so, kunwari sa inyo, kung meron kayo yung mga physical na pumupunta face-to-face, -face, I really don't know what they are doing. So, yeah, unfortunately, I can't be of much help on that aspect. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But yeah. Okay, John. Thanks. Okay. Any suggested apps or canvas features you use for color? There is a collaborations link, although I guess this is this speaks more about my personality. I usually work on my own, <laughs> except of course when uh, well, no, naging grad student ako no. I mean, I do collaborate with my kapwa, you know, colleagues and the grad students. Um, but technically, there is this option. I've just never used it. Though. Although usually, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the way collaboration works is you literally share a certain file or something. That's why it's a collaboration. So, for example, you collabor when you collaborate, you, you share a certain Google Drive folder and everyone has access to that. And yeah, but... At most, I mean, the crudest I can think of is just, you know, let's meet by, by Zoom. Oh, by the way, speaking of, yeah, so speaking of collaboration, that's exactly what we're doing. So, oh, yeah, let me show this. Sorry. So this is, this so far has been about, my, my examples were myself, right? However, my uh, agito. Yeah, so we are actually virtually attending this algebraic geometry uh, ver uh, online class by, by a professor from Stanford. Uh, probably some of you might know him, Ravi Vakil, because he's super sikat siya. Uh, Olympiad this, uh, Olympian siya and also super re researcher. Ng ano. uh, ang point ko ay, kento ang ginagawa niya ngayon. Welcome back for week. So two. algebraic geometry uh, in time and, of COVID. Uh, so no, my, my point is, so yeah, so he gives these lectures all across the United States. I mean, all, everyone who can watch this video, this, this channel. So yeah, so from familiar with algebraic geometry, so sheaves, pre-sheaves, um, schemes and stuff. Point is, so for example, yung co my, my cohort, um, of, of grad students who are watching these videos, the, these lectures, we collaborate in the sense of we actually do this. We meet via Zoom. Like there's like every every week or two, 
someone reports and we we annotate all of each of us annotates on each other's work using just zoom like you no canvas even but of course canvas you have all these other all these other capabilities but but just in the point of collaborating and meeting with each other and like pretending like you're actually meeting in person and uh working on an actual problem just like how you do how just like how you do things together pwede na rin <laughs> pwede na rin yung zoom gaano man ka weird uh, compared sa totoong live in face uh, uh, face to face in person uh thank you for walking us through canvas there oh yeah you're welcome god bless you too Hi, I have a question which is related to student cheating. If students have very similar solutions, numerical solutions with the same values to the decimal places, do you consider this as cheating? It is okay. Is it okay for students to consult with each other, but for them to have the same solution? But how do you handle such cases? First of all, I think this is a this is a, a more general question that that's not literally just because of the technology or what what, but um, I, uh, what's my opinion on this? Um, it's really, it's really a case to case basis kind of thing. Um, yeah, I can't say a one fit solution to it. I, I um, say, kunwari, sa math nga, no? So kung parehas yung solution nila, depende kasi, parang, una sa lahat, ang hihingin mo ba ay yung final answer lang. So, syempre, if that's the case, which, by the way, is the case for some of my online classes, not my classes, but the classes I'm, t I'm assisting for uh, or I have assisted for before uh, because the way the, the way the online book is designed, it only asks for final answers. I have no idea if, if they cheated in order to get that answer. And I'm just, no, okay, I'm just the assistant here. Well, all I can say is if I'm doing the class, I don't do it that way. I always ask for, you know, a whole argument. That's how I know that they did it themselves. Although, of course, they could have talked about it. Now, that's, not, that's beyond my control. And in fact, even if you're not, even if it's not online, that is a, a problem that you also encounter um, general, <laughs> like I will never know if they actually talked about this. And I guess if that other guy has a somewhat different looking solution, at least he put some thought in it. I really don't know. I mean, these are questions with no hard answers. <laughs> these are very difficult questions. Like, how, how do I handle such cases? Um, usually I am in that risk. I'm on... <laughs> I'm in that end of the spectrum where I only want to cloister myself in my mathematical shell and not worry about these people involving issues. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the most that I can, the most one fits all thing that I can say is it's really case to case basis. Um, now, as to, as to, is it okay for students to consult with, with each other? I think what I learned here is consulting is okay as long as you're not copying. Um, in the sense that, what do, what do I mean by consulting? Sometimes you learn from your peers, especially if you're doing research. I think if there's anything that I can share with substance here and with, with conviction and affirmation, is that consulting is not a bad thing. Consulting in the sense that, what are your ideas? Brainstorming. Copying though is a different, is a different story. That's not, that's not, um, that's not, instructive consulting is instructive i mean talking about a problem is instructive so actually i'm okay with that um but um but actually just doing nothing kumbaga parang group work diba so group work is okay but actually doing nothing for it then that's a different story but again that's a, that's a slippery slope i mean it's difficult to distinguish them between those two any tips on administering exams online? That's a good question because I myself am um, quite um, reluctant about the idea of online exams. And I'm lucky to be assigned, for example, history of mathematics, which does not require an exam because what on earth are you gonna take an exam about on a history class? Um, it's more of appreciating the development of math, right? Um, but, 
for the complex analysis class, there were two options. One was to uh, give a final, uh, sorry, sorry, make the final a very difficult problem set. That was one of the options. Of course, that's not a perfect solution. And in fact, there is an alternative, which is literally give an exam. And there is what you call Proctor U, like Proctor with the capital U, but I hear that there are certain issues with it. So I myself can't even vouch for it. Um, so I don't know if there are other, I, I, I do know that, my, my point is I do know that for example here, there are, I don't know if these are apps or actual companies that, um, that hire people to, you know, to watch you while you're taking an exam. So, inter so related to the cheating for an exam, right? Not for a homework though, for an exam or yeah, for, ex for an exam. So some of my, so, some, some of the students here, some of the professors here require the students to go through this process called proctor you. And then what, ha what happens is literally you're having a one-on-one -on -one meeting with your proctor <laughs> and you will have to show your, your room that, okay, wala akong kodigo dito. <laughs> so, hindi ako mangopia, ganyan. Tapos, nakatingin siya sa'yo. Pero, again, this is America. <laughs> so, maraming mga issues doon tulad ng, um, is it okay? Like, does it, does it infringe privacy? Blah, blah, blah. There's also, there's also logistical, logistic issues. So, well, medyo wala akong masyadong opinion about the, kung may infringement ba ng privacy kung ano man. But definitely, may issue ako dun sa logistic issues na hindi daw nag, I don't know, para may security issues. No, sorry, not logistic, security issues. Like they, they're collecting the data of students and they're keeping those data. And, you know, these are the kinds of data that you can use for hacking, I guess, or getting your bank account. I'm not sure. So, yeah. Um, so, may mga ganong issue. Hindi ko alam kung merong, merong pumalit sa Proctor U. Pero definitely, alam ko na may mga companies that actually assign proctors looking at you while taking an exam. I hope that answers that question. All right. So we thank John for gracing us with his presence and enlightening us um, with the use of technology, especially in this very challenging situation that we have. And so now um, we turn you over to Dr. Greg Pawilin. Yes, uh, thank you, Teacher Greg? Rhea. And, yes. And thank, and thank, thank you, Gab. Thank you, thank you very much for that uh, sharing. And thank you for uh, imparting your knowledge to us and using technology, especially Canvas, so that gives us an idea that I think, yes, the College of Human Ecology should start uh, training uh, our faculty now for Canvas. We don't need to wait for the OBPAA to, to give us the go signal. Okay, so in fact, the good news is there are already uh, good people okay, who are willing to help us. And of course, as, as a rule, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to take people, I get people outside the UP system so that, of course, we need to learn from them and we need also to connect and we need to see what, how things are, uh, or why, how they do things outside the UP system. Okay, so uh, next week, my dear colleagues, so, so please join us again. So we will have Professor uh, or Doctor, uh, I, I forgot now the speaker. And so... <laughs> That's uh, bad. No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, turning, I'm getting old, Gab. Okay, uh, yes, Doctor, uh, yeah, she's my student, former student. Dr. Javinyar, the Director of uh, Guidance and Counseling of the University of the Philippines, Diliman, so that we will see also what they are doing, okay, in order to support. And of course, now that we are having this uh, series of webinars, I can see the need for us to look to invite also another speaker who will talk about uh, how to use Canvas or how to use technology for teaching laboratories and everything, and also with the social sciences. So we will prepare for that. I'll contact somebody from the University of Hawaii, Manua, to, to provide us with all this uh, stuff. So the curriculum committee and the, co the College of Human Ecology will be more proactive in helping our faculty. So please let us know if there are things that you still wanted to learn. So of course, we still have two webinars, but definitely we will have or we will schedule the, the Canvas training on the first week of uh, uh, September. Okay, 
my dear friends, our friends from the Ateneo de Manila University agreed to train us for <laughs> for the for the canvas for free. Okay, so in fact, they are already asking for that for the details. So that's how good our neighbors in Katipunan Gab. Okay, so that's anyway, actually great to hear. Yeah, yes, yeah, and sometimes they are better. Okay. I agree. Uh, All right. <laughs> okay, so those are the things that we are trying, we will do. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much for and then we, we have a very well, fruitful activity for our morning this today. So thank you, Gab. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. May utang akong Happy kapi. to help. Okay. Yeah, yeah. virtual cafe. Yes, yes, yes. However, yes. that works. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you very much po sa lahat na nag-attend ngayong umagang ito. So we will see each other again next week. Okay, 2 o'clock po tayo on psychosocial support. And we will find also another speaker okay, for uh, uh, to discuss yung paggamit ng laboratory okay, using Canvas or using technology. Okay, thank you very much. God bless you, Gab. Okay, remember your promise. You remember your promise, okay? Remember your promise. Wow, my okay. guilt trip talaga. Oh, maraming salamat po. So, <laughs> pwede ho ba uh, kakantahin po natin in a virtual, in a, as a virtual community. UP beloved. UP nating mahal. Okay. What? Okay. <laughs> thank you, Teacher Aya, and thank you, Dean. Yes, thank you. Yes, maraming salamat. Salita. Maraming salamat. Salamat ulit, Gab-Gab. Salamat po sa... Maraming ating... salamat sa UP naming mahal. Yeah. Yes, salamat, John. Okay. Uh, John, John, may item kami sa mathematics. Ha? Okay, sige. <laughs> ano daw? <laughs> Sumakitulo ko doon. Teka. Okay. So, maraming pong salamat sa ating lahat. Thank you, Ma'am Jen. Thank you sa din sa office, sa mga staff na tumulong. We'll see each other again. We'll see each other again. Sa mga itagaybang college po na nandito, maraming salamat din po sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Teacher Rhea. Thank you, Teacher. Thank you. Our pleasure. Salamat. Thank you, Sir Yes, bye-bye.